So we wanted to make sure to get to this. Kamala Harris did sit for another solo interview um, with results that I would say are indicative of perhaps why she doesn't sit for that many of these interviews. So yeah. let me just give you a, a little bit of uh, what went down here. So this video is going to start off with her response to an answer about how specifically she would go about lowering prices. Let's take a listen. I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, if, if, but a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn, you know, and, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have a beautiful character to build, and my goal is, three million new homes by the end of my first term. In addition, to help people who just want to get their foot in the door, literally. And so giving first-time home buyers a $25,000 down payment assistance. A new approach is to expand the child tax credit to $6,000 for young families for the first year of their child's life. I think people want a leader who has common sense and tries to find common ground. I'm supported by over 200 Republicans who worked for both Presidents Bush, John McCain, Mitt Romney. So she gets around to talking about some of her policy plans, but yeah. Sauter, I don't know why this is hard. <laughs> like, so she gets asked, okay, what are you going to do, right? And it's, I come from a middle-class background and people loved their lawns and don't we have great values? It's like, you have good policy proposals that you've put out that are really, really popular. I don't know why there isn't in her playbook, in her list of talking points, right out of the gate, I'm going to crack down on price gouging. I'm going to crack down on, you know, the prescription drug prices. I'm going to bring them down. And then, you know, the housing stuff is really good. The child tax credit, it's really good. I don't know why there isn't just like a dut, dut, dut. And then if you want to zoom out and do your, l let me tell you about my values and where I come from and why these are the things that I believe in and committed to, that's fine. But, you know, I, I'm not trying to nitpick here, but I do think this is the, the one piece that is really missing for a lot of voters. Even well, a lot of voters who watched the debate and were like, she did way better than Trump and I cannot stand Trump. And she made him look like a fool and he made himself look like a fool. But I really still want to get that core of like, who are you and what specifically are you committed to doing on day one? For some reason, this is the most difficult question for her. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, I think there's a, when you say why, I think the answer is, is that she doesn't believe it. I mean, these are things where she doesn't believe anything. And that's actually the number one knock against her. She's so used to having to lean into her identity and others that it appears to be the default answer. Keep in mind, this is only a 10 minute interview. And we gave you literally, I guess, the highlights. But the point that you're making is that if you calibrate to what, and this is where I always say with Americans, like, look, you could say a lot about our country, but people genuinely intuit and cut to the truth very quickly in a way that a lot of pundits are not able to. They are like, listen, I think you are better than Trump character-wise. Um, I probably trust you a little bit more on a few different things, but what are you actually going to do? That was the number one question amongst all of those swing voters. I do not know what she stands for. And this is a Hillary-esque mistake. Hillary made her campaign all about her and also being about not Donald Trump, where here with Kamala, she's personalizing her story. Again, fine if you're maybe giving a campaign speech or something, but this is a direct question about prices. I do think, again, that the major problem is likely she doesn't believe things or she has a, you know, the copy and paste from her campaign website from the Joe Biden uh, campaign promises. It does tell you something. She's got the Biden people on her staff. Maybe she does believe it if you were to, uh, say generally, but the deep specifics, the preparation, this is exactly why she doesn't do a lot of these. So I I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't find it mystifying in that this is kind of how she's always been. It also is concerning just from a general like candidate level where we know that you can deliver a decent performance if you want, like at the debate. So 
do you just not think or prepare you know, for these things? And if you do, is this really the best that you can come up with? This was very old school behavior from her, I thought. For her, it, it really is all about preparation. When she really mm-hmm. takes something serious with in, she can be fantastic. I mean, she was fantastic in that debate. She, she I, I <laughs> have watched it now two times and it is amazing. She does exactly what she wants to do in that debate in every single answer. It was masterful in a way. But when she doesn't lock in and prepare as much, then you get, you know, a very sort of middling and stumbling performance like this. And, you know, to go back to this piece, because I've been thinking about this, because you Mm -hmm. look at Trump, like his answer on healthcare in the debate was, I have concepts of a plan. (laughs) His answer when he got asked about childcare was utterly incomprehensible and somehow involved like Ivanka and Marco Rubio and tariffs. And it was like, what are you talking about? But people have a sense of what makes Trump tick, like the things that he actually has a consistent passion for. Um, like immigration is one mm-hmm. of them. Like and tariffs. You, you may not know the specifics of what his he actually will do on immigration. You know, is he actually going to do the mass deportation? He didn't last time around, but he did some other stuff that I found pretty terrible. But you know, that is core to him without even getting the, the white paper and really knowing all the details of how it's going to work. And I think tariffs, yeah, you could also put into that bucket as well. You know, you look at like a Bernie Sanders. Like, you know what that man is all about. You know what he's thinking about when he gets up. You know what he's thinking about when he goes to bed. So even to, to go back to your Hillary Clinton comparison, like Hillary had all kinds of white papers and she wouldn't have flubbed that answer. Like, okay, what are you going to do to bring down costs? She would have rattled off or like, here's my plan and here's my white paper, blah, blah, blah. But again, on that, like, you know, examination of, of the soul, people would be like, yeah, but I, I don't know what really drives her outside of her own ambition. And so Kamala Harris has a, a similar issue, not just because she's changed her position. Okay. Trump's changed his positions a lot. You're allowed to change your position, by the way, if you've got new information, et cetera. But when you, could, when you add that together with this sense of like, I don't know what the thing is for you. Like, I don't know what is, what is driving you in the political realm outside of your own desire to be in this office. I think that's where, where it continues to be the biggest question mark for her, honestly, at this point. And, um, you know, I don't know that it's really fixable, the, the only advice I could give to them is just like pick something with mm-hmm. child care, housing, like just pick something and just relentlessly talk about it. Just fake it. Like that's your passion, you know, and no yeah. one's buying this small business is my passion, by the way. <laughs> it's not small business. It's clearly not your passion, but yeah. pick something, lean into it, talk about it a lot, feign some passion. That's probably the best she could do because that's the piece that's really missing. And then it becomes blatantly obvious in a question like this or the one she got from Dana Bash, what's your day one agenda, that she similarly kind of fumbled around with before eventually, yes, landing on her policy proposals, but didn't have that burning like, this is the number one goal of the next administration, at least not that came across in that interview. I think that's a very astute answer. Uh, People in general are pretty good at intuiting what makes people tick. I I, I guarantee people who watch the show knows what the two of us uh, makes us tick and what Mm -hmm. there's a lot of passion in. And, but that's important. People can intuit something in the way that you can with anybody, your boss or anybody who you're looking at or you're watching. So what we see here with Kamala is that tick answer when you're not immediately burning uh, to do something, then it does tell us that it's almost kicks in like, a, oh, I should probably now mention my three million new homes. But she didn't actually answer that question about prices. She didn't really say the word inflation. She didn't acknowledge necessarily the pain that people are in or try to paint a bigger picture. It started with herself. You got, basically you're trying to dance around the issue, but you're not actually zeroing in. And voters understand that. So if she loses, a big part of this will be why. Because people felt, at the end of the day, I didn't truly understand what she was going to do for me. Trump also really does benefit from the fact that he was president, and people have a lot of rose-colored glasses about what those four years were like. I mean, rose-colored almost implies that they're incorrect. They remember fondly what prices, gas, and all that stuff looked like under the Trump administration, and they feel there's been a lot of chaos and uh, price inflation since then. 
That is just empirical, it's reality. Kamala needs to actually do a good job to try and actually diminish those colored glasses and say, no, remember the chaos? And he's actually bringing that, he only cares about himself. Often the best hit that she had on him during the debate. So in general, this is why she won't do the interviews. Uh, but I mean, well, actually, so no, I apologize. She will do one more interview. Whether it's an actual interview, we'll see. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is kind of funny. So she's doing this live event uh, with Oprah Winfrey, we can put this up on the screen. I mean, it's a campaign function. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a an real interview. interview. <laughs> right. exactly. um, but she's doing what's described as a live stream rally with Oprah Winfrey, who of course endorsed Kamala and spoke at the the DNC. Um, she gave <laughs> her speech. In my opinion, it was like very cliched, but because she's Oprah, she like made it work. You know, she just has mm -hmm. so much charisma that you're like, I want to hear what you are saying, even when it's just a bunch of pablum political cliches. But anyway, um, you know, I think the strategy basically makes sense. And she's done enough now to lower the temperature on the like, when are you going to sit for an interview? When are you going to sit for an interview? When are you, you going to sit for an interview? She's done a couple like local news, like the one we just showed you, that was a Philadelphia local news um, journalist. I think she did a radio interview. Like she's done a few things enough for them to be able to point to, to be like, see, she's accessible. And it's not her wheelhouse. She does much better in a rally situation with the, the prompt ready to go. Trump is giving her a tremendous gift if he sticks by his, I don't want to debate again. Mm -hmm. um, although, you know, given how well she performed in the first one, I don't think she should necessarily be afraid of a second debate either. Um, although I would think it would be difficult for her to match her performance there and for Trump to match the low of his performance there as well. But, um, you know, I think they basically are correct that this is probably the right strategy given the candidate that they have. Yeah, I mean, I think that's correct. I think at the end of the day, we now know who she is, and Americans at this point are they going to have to make their peace with it or not? And that's risky. That's really what it is. It's just poll after poll tells us that this is a risky strategy, that this is difficult. A lot of the ball is actually in Trump's court to see how he is going to do this. Is he going to seize the narrative, and is he going to try and put it in more advantageous directions for him in that contrast in the way that he takes press questions, or even in terms of the issues? that are highlighted here or not, the less that it is about him personally and the more that it's gonna be about issues, then that contrast on Kamala will be difficult because it will remind people that she doesn't necessarily stand for anything. Uh, but, you know, it really comes back to how Kamala too is going to, is she just gonna continue this Oprah Winfrey kind of vibes strategy? Look. Some of the polls are in her favor. There's been a lot of decent ones that have come out for her in the last couple of days. Pennsylvania actually showing her up by a couple of points. So it is highly possible that this is exactly uh, what is, that this is exactly the way that she does win the election. And that also demonstrates both her strengths and weaknesses as a candidate. And very, very much so, what I think it previews more than anything is she is going to struggle in the presidency. You can not get away with this when you are president, just at a baseline, even if you try to keep the press away. Look at Biden, they did their best. You will be revealed. The job genuinely requires it. Even if you try not to do a press conference, one day you're gonna be sitting with five European leaders and you're gonna have a dementia incident and wander off to go look at a parachute. And America's gonna be like, what the hell is going on over here? So buckle up because uh, that is not gonna be good for you if you win the job. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show. Help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.